All right, so this is a continuation of animation, um, but it's also our last class. So I thought um, I'd make it a little bit sort of lighter and um, I'll kind of go through a few little tips and tricks um, and talk about a few things we haven't really um, covered. Um, and this is kind of related to animation as well. So first up, I thought what I'd do is I'd cover um, the ventilators because we haven't actually talked about that. Um, and a ventilator, um, I'm just going to make a quick little ecosystem here. Actually, I'll just grab a little plane. And now what it does is it kind of, um, it's kind of like another way of controlling the wind in your scene. So normally we would control the wind in our scene um, in this little palette in here. As I've said in the past, this thing doesn't seem to do a heck of a lot. There it goes. Show example wind. You know, gusts, that sort of thing. So that's normally how we do it, but that does it for our entire world. Okay, and it's going to be the same everywhere. If we want it more localized, then we use this little ventilator here. Okay, and this ventilator, it looks a bit like a spotlight. And it's got a lot of very similar controls to the spotlight, actually. Um, first of all, this is way too extreme. So we've got two ways of kind of controlling it. Um, there's this sort of um, the distance, which as you can see here, this is kind of like the fall off over that distance. Um, and then you've got the intensity, but you'll notice that when you go and reduce the intensity, it actually reduces the distance kind of as well. So it's kind of a little bit weird. Um, and you've got to get this about right because otherwise um, you end up really making quite a mess of your scene. Um, and I'm going to show you examples of that later. So we're going to go with 10 meters at 100. Now here's my um, my plane, so I've got to obviously put an ecosystem on it. Now one little thing with the ecosystems is that they're not all created equal. Some react really nicely to wind, others just, if you blow on them too hard, they actually like flip upside down. Um, so I'm just going to grab, let's see, maybe... Now, I know that dry weeds is one of the examples, and you can actually see why, because if you go and populate this, you can actually see that it's here, like, kind of has all this material beneath the surface, which is really weird, and when you, if you blow on it too hard, they actually flip upside down, and you end up with a completely different look, and it's really bizarre. I'll show you an example of that shortly. So, I don't like to use um, dry weeds. Um, now, Yes, if you kind of play around with it and you get it so that the strength, you know, so it's not too intense, then you can get it to work. But if you blow too hard on them, yeah, it just looks odd. Um, let's see, let's get um, something that looks kind of interesting. There we go. And we'll populate our scene with this. Now, of course, it does mean that we're going to be rendering lots of stuff. And it's tricky to say the least because you know usually you've got to wait a couple of hours before you get your renders back so there's a lot of sort of tweaking adjusting but once you kind of get used to it you'll find that um you're a lot quicker all right so here's our scene and um sorry where are we um Okay, so we've populated it. Let's just adjust our camera so we can kind of see what's going on here. And here it is. So, of course, you've got to do a little animation, otherwise it's not going to look very impressive. And the funny thing is, is that, yeah, it always wants you to move or animate something in your scene. Now, I usually do a little bit of camera movement anyway, just because it looks cool. Um, but you can right-click in here and go Set Animation End. However, I've had mixed results with this and found that sometimes it just doesn't animate. So, um, so if you set that and it's still not animating properly, in fact, you'll probably see. Yeah. But um, actually, what I might do is I'm going to animate this moving. Cool. Oops, let's just set that out here. That's my end frame. And get in my beginning. And we'll move that so it kind of like passes over our scene. Alright, now if we go halfway, 
Come on. And we hit render this system. Double click on here. We should see kind of plants moving. Now, obviously, it's really hard to see plants moving. And so all we can really do is compare it to what it looks like beforehand. So that would be my first tip is bring this up. Okay, so you can kind of see I'm getting some movement. Okay, so let's render off a quick version of this. So I'm just gonna set this up so yeah, preview quality will be fine. And let's go six forty by three sixty internal. Um, save to disk. Oh, yeah, we'll just get, we won't turn that on for now because, of course, we have to go into here and go animation render options and yeah, preview. And we'll hit browse and we're going to save that to my uh, class 12 test one. Okay, and we'll call it um, oh, test one. We'll do. I'm just going to actually save it out to a single file. Now, the, of course, I don't usually do that, but in this case, it'll be fine. So we're going to um, leave that going. Frame 2 of 122, and it's going to take, it reckons, about 5 minutes. So let's see if it's correct. I'll just leave it as is. Okay, see you soon. Well, and here's our finished render, and... Um, not exactly impressive, I must say. So, looks like we need to make a few little adjustments. Um, it took eight minutes to render, which isn't too bad. I mean, I know my system relatively fast. Um, so, why is that? Well, it would appear that our, we're just hitting the ground there, so let's, um, let's just put a little bit of angle on it, right? So, we'll grab it from there. Rotate it around a little bit. Crop it down a bit. That's a bit closer. And in fact, what I want to do is I'm going to kind of get it so it's doing a few different things. So maybe at the end of our animation, we'll roll it around into the opposite direction. That way we'll kind of see the wind moving. And yeah, we'll even get a bit closer maybe. And we'll increase the intensity to 200. Okay, so it's getting more, it's gaining strength as it goes through this animation. Remember, anything that's numeric will animate. You can see that number changing. And again, what I'm going to do is go to this point and we'll render off one frame. And again, pretty difficult to tell. There. Okay, we'll set that one off. Animation render options. Actually, in fact, what I might do as well, let's just make this a bit bigger. Ah, now be careful. I just animated it. Go back to the time of zero and then make your changes. And I'm actually going to add um, just some other species to this as well because it could be that this plant just doesn't react that much to wind. <clears throat> so let's have a look in here. Let's also add... New data received. Yeah, some reads. I'd imagine they'd be programmed to react quite a lot to the wind. And let's also, obviously the objects and, ah, no, there's something vital I didn't do. <laughs> One little option we need to switch on. See this guy here? It says influence ecosystem. If we click that on, 
It will now blow my ecosystem about, and we're probably going to be blowing it to pieces now. So if I go back to that last image and hit render, boom, there we go. Okay, so you can see it's having a huge effect. It's almost making my vegetation leave the scene. Oh, did I actually populate that with our new ecosystem? Doesn't look like I did, did I? Populate. There we go. So now we've got reeds in there as well. I'm also... going to... Oh, I might just go and reduce that ventilator back down again to 100. In fact, I'm going to drop it right down to about 10. No, 20. Okay, so it's actually going to drop in strength as it goes. Cool. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so let's hit that. Animation. Animation render options. Hit browse and go to my render box go new class 11 test 2 and we'll call that test 2 nice list what is that actually that maximum quality okay render and we'll let that go for another 122 frames should see a little bit more happening in there now all right back again took about nine minutes and what does it look like let's go to my render box over here class two here it is <laughs> so now we can see our wind blowing it around far too aggressively and so this is the game we kind of play now actually I've got some that I um, pre-rendered so I'm just going to show you a little scene, and I'm going to talk about how I've set it all up. Um, and it's called Pally Takeoff. Um, I'm not really wanting to save that. Um, a really cool thing to do with these is that you can attach it to objects. So for example, a car, so you could animate a car going through, but then you could have um, a ventilator attached to the car. Um, so you either group it with it, or you can even... Um, parent it, which I don't know if I've talked about parenting things yet, but I'll talk about that in a sec. And that way, as the car drives past your foliage, it would blow the, the, the foliage around next to the road, for example. Um, so in this case, what I've done is I've attached, now this is a heli fighter uh, model that I had. And what I've done is I've done some animation on it. So um, you can see this kind of these like rotors on the edges. Where are we? Rotating this guy here. And so I've, I've got an animation on him so that um, as he takes off, you can see these things folding down. Okay. And in that same group, so I'm actually animating this rotating right rotor. And inside there, there's a ventilator. Right, let's just go back to the beginning. So you can actually see we've got, for example, in here the orientation. And the orientation has um, this going on. All right. So as we go through our keyframes, they fold down, and then our helicopter takes off. And it's blowing the foliage around. Okay, and you can also see I'm animating the strength. And I'm currently actually rendering this out, so I'm just um, waiting for the, the last ones to come through. Where are we? Um, so I've just got to go through the render farm, because um, these do take a little, little while. Uh, this is a new iMac that we've got, so they're quite a lot faster than even our Mac Pros. Um, they are real grunty machines, 16 gig of RAM. So. Those new, the new um, IMAX are a very good view, uh, view machine. All right, so let's have a look at some of the examples. And you can see me kind of playing around with it, including 
um, some failed attempts. So I thought I'd show you my failed attempts. Um, let me render box. Okay, so that's my current one. Sorry, hang on, give me two seconds. Um, I save it to Dropbox. I quite often do that. I'll rent it to, to Dropbox, and that way you get to see your renders when they're finished at home. Okay, so here you can see I've used that um, that dry grass, and you can see how it's actually flipping the grass up and upside down. It's just weird. And so I adjust strengths and played around with that some more and got even more weird results. And I got rid of the dry grass. So now my strengths um, weren't that good. I don't know. Maybe there is still dry grass in that one. Yeah, there's definitely still the dry grass. See, that's actually the underneath of the dry grass sticking out. Weird, eh? And then this is one of the latest ones. So that's actually what's rendering at the moment. And so all I did actually was got rid of the dry grass and you can see I'm getting a much better result. As the, the only thing is that these blades in here are rotating as well. Except because there's so many blades, um, you can't really see it. So I'd really need to do some kind of motion blur or something like that. So that's actually the one that's um, going at the moment. And it is very close to finished actually. Where is it? Oh, maybe it is finished. No, here it is. We've got 51 seconds remaining. That's pretty cool. So that's almost done. Now, actually, while I'm in here as well, you'll actually notice in the background, I did the old trick of um, of projecting my rendered image onto it to speed things up. Otherwise, I've got this um, hill in the background with lots of trees on it, all being blown by the wind and all that sort of carry on, which I don't really want to afford. And you can't tell that they're being blown around anyway. So what I actually did is, and you probably don't know, is I've got set up another camera that's pointing straight at my island. And I rendered, I switched everything off except for my island, rendered it out, okay, and got an image that looked like, um, like this. Um, actually, I, I adjusted it um, a little bit as well because it was um, very washed out um, because of the atmosphere settings. And the problem with that is that if it's already washed out and then you go and project that onto it and then you re-render it, then it gets washed out even further. So sometimes you just got to adjust the levels. But then, I actually just took another image, if I just ignore this mask for a second. Um, where, are we? where is it? Oh, disable, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so it's actually just some cliffs. And I've um, just painted in where I want those cliffs to appear. Not terribly accurate. Um, it was just easier than trying to get a texture that looked bang on. And I can sit here and play around with this even more if I wanted to. Um, and so then I've gone back into view, okay, and we're projecting that texture. So I duplicated my terrain, increased its size a little bit. New data okay. received. One of the tutorials, uh, one of the lectures that we did on this covers um, this projection mapping, okay. And then I'm projecting that image. Um, one thing is don't forget. Oh, oh sorry, yeah, and here, don't forget to um, put the aspect ratio on. So that's your width divided by your height. Okay, so in my case, it's 16 by 9 is the ratio. Um, so if you render that to 1920 divided by 1080, you get 1.77777. Okay, so just make sure you put that in, otherwise the image will be all distorted. Otherwise, yeah, it's kind of a bit weird. It assumes that it's square, which of course the camera is essentially sort of a square camera, so I don't know. But anyway, that's how you do it. And that means it's going to, um, actually I was going to say cancel to this, it's going to be a, um, 
I render actually slightly higher, but it's going to be a lot quicker to render out. And it shouldn't look any different. In fact, it will probably look a bit better. Um, if we have a look at the render stack for this. Oops, you can see me playing around with other stuff. Okay, you can see the render comes out looking really cool. So that was it before. And yeah, not looking very exciting. So it was just easy just to quickly Photoshop it. You can see me kind of playing around there. But that looks much more convincing. And you could yeah, go more overboard than that if you wanted to. Alright. And let's see, so that's actually finished rendering now. So this is when I get my stack of images in here. And um, you can see it's actually slowly going through and updating all this. It does that um, in its final pass. And so you can see here. Here's my um, final image. So looking pretty cool. That background, see it looks really nice. It's kind of got a real soft effect to it. Um, those cliffs look very real. Grass is looking pretty cool. Now I usually use QuickTime. Um, but you probably can't get this anymore, QuickTime Player 7. It's kind of annoying, but they got rid of QuickTime. I'm not sure, but maybe VLC will open an image se sequence. There's a good chance, I imagine. Let's just see if it will. Um, I've got to wait a little bit here anyway. So it's, see, it turns all these temp files. I don't know why, I think it must be doing the post-processing or something. Get all these temp files and then they eventually get turned. And all these, which are usually huge as well. And you'll see that after it's finished doing all of its rendering, all those disappear and you're left with just these. You actually see 65 appear in a second. There you go. Alright, let's see if VLC will open an image sequence, eh? Open. Hermes. Uh, render box. Only five. Figure it out. Nope. Hang on. Okay, so as it turns out, you can't open image sequence with VLC. That's cool because that's a nice segue into the next thing I want to talk about. It's using Photoshop with image sequences. Um, so I might just close this. Um, I don't need to save that. And close that. I'm going to go File Open. And we're going to open this. Now notice, at the bottom of the open dialog box, it says um, image sequence. Um, we just have to say what the frame rate is. So in this case, I've done it out at 25 frames a second. Um, it doesn't know what the frame rate is. So even though we have everything set up in view as 25 frames a second, of course, it just spits out a whole bunch of images. Um, that was a bit weird. Oh, I've got Premiere still running. Quit that. Um, and so we have to tell it what the frame rate is but the cool thing with that is if you want to do like a slow-mo type of thing you render it out at like um, 100 frames a second and then when you import it you import it at 25 frames a second and it'll play at quarter speed so yeah pretty cool anyway we can now hit play and it will play back our um, little helicopter thing taking off and you can kind of see it blowing the wind around and all that sort of carry on. You can see it's got a very straight edge to it though which is kind of a little bit weird. But you see a much better effect. Still a little bit weird. You can kind of see as this thing f kind of folds in on itself it's got this strange effect as well. It's a little bit too accurate almost. So maybe you can kind of like, you know, get a few ventilators. You can see a few things are getting completely blasted away. But looking pretty cool. Now, now that we're in Photoshop, check this out. We can actually go through here 
and add all sorts of stuff. So for example, let's say I wanted to um, vignette this. So I'll just go and do um, an exposure. So this is just a, what do you call it? A, um, um, an adjustment layer. And I can go, and we'll just um, brush into here. A great big dirty big brush. Like that. And then I'm just going to go blur, Gaussian blur massively. So I'm actually blurring the. There we go. Maybe not quite that much. Alright. And now when I go and I can vignette my image. I can even add noise to this because it's a smart object. I could say, well, actually, let's add noise. So, very subtle amount of noise. Let's say, like, 1%, 2%, just so we can just see it. Cool. A little bit of noise. Um, maybe a slight blur. Not that much, obviously. Like, about half a pixel, maybe even less. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Um, uh, that was meant to be a smart object. Oh, no, it wasn't a smart object. Just means that I burnt that in now. I can't, well I can go undo, undo. But let's just see where are we. Let's just go back to here, right? If we go image, oh, sorry, layer. Actually, got the right thing zone. Layer smart object convert to smart object. Sweet. Now I can do those and the non-destructive Gaussian blur. 0.3 pixel. Filter noise. Add noise. Cool. Okay. Hit play. Notice it's it is down raising it a little bit. Also, my noise. This is the problem with using Photoshop is that it's not really designed for um, for video, so the noise isn't moving. So I'd probably get rid of that that noise. I don't think there's anything we could actually do about it either. So kind of pointless. Disable smart filter. No, sorry, delete smart filter. There we go. Excellent. I'm pretty happy with that. And now we go um, export render to video. This will pop up. And we've got a few options in here, so you'll notice it says um, the format. DPX is um, a very good format for doing this sort of thing too, and it would be a very professional workflow. Um, and you can see we've got all sorts of options here, including going up to 1920 by 1080. That's just the um, the properties of that codec. We could go to H.264, which is probably what I'm going to do now. And you see it's got a whole bunch of presets in here as well. You can see it's a document size 1280 by 720, which is what we rendered it out as frame rate, etc, etc. Um, and progressive basically means it's going to do every, well, I don't want to go, you can Google progressive and um, interlaced if you really want to. Um, anything else? I don't think so. Um, oh, we could go to quick time movies, although for some reason it has a very reduced set of um, codecs available, I don't know why. That kind of sucks because you can't, I can't see any way of changing it to a different codec, but anyway. Um, but we can also go back to an image sequence as well, so we could go and spit that out as an image sequence. But we're going to go, um, out, we'll just go and spit it out to H.264 because this is just for web. Um, we could say high quality, document size, yep, etc, etc. Um, I think that's all good. And then we go render, oh hang on, select a folder for it to go to. So we'll just put it into here and call this Heli5 or something. Select folder, create new subfolder, blah 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 blah. 
LE5, and hit render. And that's now going to go through and do basically all of those um, layer effects that we've just done, or layer adjustment layers and anything else that we've put on there. So it could have been text. Um, and it's adding that to each individual image and then converting it into an H.264 video. Uh, and it's doing relatively fast as well. And we will end up, if I go and quickly run over to here and look at, um, where are we? Uh, render box. So you can see it's still working on it. And there it all is. Double click. And opens up in quick time. And we should be able to play it. So we've just done post processing to a video. There you go. There's my helicopter taking off, moving all the grass about. And off it goes. So yeah, so obviously you've got to play around with it a little bit. Um, it probably would have been better if I'd, I didn't. I was a bit lazy. I didn't put a ventilator on the other side. Um, but yeah, so you can have a lot of fun with it. And as you also saw, you can use Photoshop to um, help you out as well. You can see my water's all moving and animated. Um, a few little things I would probably do is you can kind of see that the fall off needs to be kind of adjusted a little bit. So if I flick over into view and have a look at this ventilator, you can kind of see what's happening is that it's very even fall off. I would probably actually go and adjust that a little bit so that it was kind of more kind of like that. Um, you can actually say smooth and it'll make it nice smooth. So we've got like a very strong and then it kind of put us out quite quickly and then just kind of stays in there. That would kind of help. Um, we could possibly maybe move the ventilator around a little bit, kind of add a bit of randomness to it. Um, that's not too difficult because all we need to do is kind of like jiggle it about. Um, so if we just grab the ventilator here and go into here, we um, just need this vibrate switched on. So this is going to vibrate it and the X, Y and Z axis um, of um, our ventilator and um, here's our variation of intensity so it's basically um, cruising along and vibrating I think that's increasing over time I think that's how that works I'm not entirely sure to be honest um, so we want to go um, let's make this um, I think that should be up to one meter even is that I'm um, I think that's how that works. So if I said five, let's just have a look. Yeah, see how the ventilator's moving around? Okay, and it's moving quite a lot, which is cool, because that's kind of what we want. It means that every frame, the ventilator's kind of moving about, it should look a little bit more chaotic. Okay, we don't want like parts of the helicopter be vibrating like that. But that there looks to be pretty healthy. Okay, it's still going up and moving and everything, but our ventilator's moving and we've got this fall off as well happening. So, we'll render that off and um, I'll be back in just a second. I'm just going to create a new document here. And, um, yeah, we'll just go through the default settings. Yeah, sure, we'll save this. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. I might just pause it while it's saving. All right, so here we are in our blank document. <clears throat> um, I just want to talk a little bit about clouds. Now, normally, well, actually, there's kind of two ways of creating individual clouds. Um, clouds are really cool, but they do slow down render times. Okay, but here's one way of creating a cloud. Okay, so you can kind of see it's created a cloud. These things are quite massive, and these default clouds are actually kind of a whole bunch of spheres with a material added to them. Okay, and so this material is actually a volumetric material. And you see it's got all sorts of um, settings. And you can do like internal casting of shadows and this sort of carry on, um, which is pretty cool. 
So you can have a lot of fun with it. Um, of course, everything that's in here can be animated. Um, and there's some really complex things you can do with height modulation and stuff like that, but I don't want to go there right now. Well, maybe if we ever did an advanced course. Um, but yes, so this is um, one way of creating cloud, but there's actually another way of doing it, which is with the atmosphere editor. Now you've probably already seen this, so obviously just yeah, left click on here. You can see we can create clouds in here as well. Um, let's go with something like Actually, we'll just go with this um, thick cumulus layer. Now this, though, however, goes off into the distance. Okay, if I hit the... Okay, and it's kind of disappearing off into the distance. Okay, and actually, we'll bring this down and make it a bit thicker. All right. However, hang on, sorry. However, there is actually a thing here that says limit cloud to zone. And what this does is it means that I can actually have a, a zone of clouds. And I can actually adjust the size of this. Oops. Hang on. So we can stretch this out a bit. And actually got the right thing selected zone. So here's our zone. I don't know if I can squash it, I don't think I can for some reason. Okay, and I'm actually adjusting this. Now there's also a fall off as well, because if you notice at the moment, it kind of looks ridiculous. You know, it's very, very circular. But if we go and put a fall off on this, um, in fact, I'd like to go really high, sort of 50 to 100% even. And now you'll see that it kind of ends up like falling off a little bit more naturally. Now, of course, there is lots of ways of controlling this. And the number one way is to do it actually with the cumulus settings. So here we've got um, the cover, for example. That should reduce the amount of coverage that we have on that cloud. Okay, there we go. So now it's a little bit more random. And we can kind of make a little bit more. Play around with these. You'll notice actually, see this density? And you'll see this with a few clouds actually where they go higher than the actual density. render come on there we go so you can play around with that as well um, but it's a nice way of being able to kind of control where the clouds are and so now this is interesting when it comes to animating this though is you got two ways of animating I can actually animate the whole thing moving right however you can also animate um, the cloud staying where it is and the zone moving which is kind of weird but you see as I move this along it's kind of like as if it's moving I think I've got to reduce my density too much haven't I? Sorry my coverage too much so it's kind of which, when clouds move, they don't really just move as like a solid clump. If you did time lapse on it, you could, you'd see them kind of evolving. See, so if I move it like this, it's just going to move the entire cloud and it shouldn't actually change shape at all. Okay, you can still see that shape there. However, moving this independently. You know, it's actually evolving its shape. You can, of course, also animate all sorts of things to do with the, you know, the height of it and the altitude. And sometimes just moving these just a little bit is quite nice. Um, however, see this cloud animation. We can actually blow our clouds around, and we can have a rate of change as well. Now that will actually animate the cloud in each individual frame. Okay, so it's actually going to change with each frame. So if we go up to here, for example, you'll see that it's actually warping and changing the cloud shape. Cool. And so you combine that with a little bit of movement as well. 
Yeah, and see, look, you can actually move these kind of independently of each other. And you get this kind of weird combination sort of thing happening. And you get some really realistic cloud movements. Okay, um, just a point actually. I don't know if I've got time to render this all out. Maybe. In fact, how about we do that? How about we render out a really small quality version of this? So how long is that going to take? Oops, geez, it's gone to my. And let's just remove that. And let's go to the internal render render to screen. Let's just see how quickly that one frame renders. This out of the way. No, nope, I can't. And done. So how long did that take? Sixteen seconds. All right. So let's do a quick little animation with this. I'm actually going to um, cheat a little bit. I'm going to drop the frame rate right down to about fifteen frames a second, just so it renders quicker. And I'm going to go straight out to an mp4 at uh, high quality okay and that's about it render animation and away it goes um, one warning with clouds they're really awesome and you can fly all the way right up to them as soon as you go inside a cloud things get even slower than you could have possibly imagined. So um, as much fun as it is, um, just be warned. Um, I've done that before. All right, how's our other rendering going over here? You can see, um, where is it? The other rendering has got 43 minutes to go. Oh boy. Let's have a look at how it's coming out anyway. Because as you remember, because we're going out to an image sequence, whoops, the cool thing with an image sequence is that we can actually sort of preview it as it's going through. It's actually looking pretty cool. Let's go and open that with quick time. You might be able to find um, a free image sequence player on on the internet somewhere. I highly recommend it. It's, it is a really fantastic way of working. Um, as you can see, um, having to wait until your entire render finishes successfully um, is just risky. Um, half the time you just don't end up with what you expected. All right, um, quick time. File open image sequence. Oopsies, cancel. File open image sequence and render box heli six. Open that 25 frames a second. It's looking pretty good. See, that fall off has made a huge difference. We're not getting like this strange line. That's looking pretty cool. Looking forward to seeing the final product. All right, let's just leave that. And what are we up to here? Frame 11, so it's got 11 minutes left. So I might just pause that for a second. All right, and our render's done. And here it is. Yeah, not too bad. Okay. So we're getting a little bit of evolution happening to our cloud. And it kind of looks as if... Because in fact what's happening here is that the air that's... Um, there's moisture in the air. So as the cooler air comes in, it's actually turning into a mist. So that's kind of the effect you get when you start moving that box through the cloud surface. You start to 
kind of starts to evolve new areas and then other areas at the other side are kind of like disappearing like as if they're getting blown away so um, this is a little bit extreme um, I would do very subtle cloud movements you know basically play it back at half the speed um, but you can see to see how we can illustrate the point. It might be quite cool. Maybe it's a time lapse animation or something like that. Also, I think we've got a bit of speed ramping going on in there as well. Because if you remember, when we do our animation, the movement on this is probably there we go. Yeah, position. We're going to make this a bit bigger. Let's just get this out of the way. You can see that, see it's accelerating. What we'd want is this to be linear. We don't want it sort of accelerating and then slowing down in this animation. That's just weird. So we'll just say linear. So it's just a constant movement. That would make a lot more sense. All right. Um, Let's just create a new document again. Now, the only thing I think I... I can't remember if I've shown you this or not, but it's just parenting um, something, uh, two objects together. What that means is, and this is typically you use it for like cameras and things like that, is if we go and drop down an object, right? Now, if I move this, the camera obviously doesn't move. Now I could group these things together. Actually, can I even group them together? No, you can't. You can't group a camera in together. So what I can do though, and um, I can do this all sorts of things, lights, is I can parent it. So what I can say is link to cube. Okay, so this is, I've got my camera selected. So now if I move the cube, my camera moves with it. What's cool about this is that I can actually um, animate, so let's uh, let's just do animation here. So let's say we start off over here, okay, and then I'm going to animate to three seconds and move my object. But now I can also move my camera, okay, and so now I get this kind of double movement, okay. So our cube's racing along, our camera's tracking it, but then it's also revolving around it at the same time. So it's quite a nice way of doing things. Um, also, yeah, if you've got like headlights, you know, you can go and pop the headlights on the front of the, the front of the cube here. Yeah, I'm just going to give it one headlight. There's our light, and again we just go link to cube. And so now when we play our animation. Our light is attached to it. If I go back to time is zero, I can actually move that bit closer to the cube. There we go. All right. So it's quite a convenient way of working because I mean, obviously if I group this together, doing that complex move would have been. Well, I don't even think you could do it. So um, yeah, so that's very handy. Tracking, of course. I think I told you about that last week. So tracking, and you can track things with spotlights as well. So if I just grab this, I can say track the cube. And so my spotlight is always moving with my cube. Okay. You can see we get some really complex animation happening and it's all relatively simple. So it's all about tracking, linking. You can um, have a loose response to the tracking. And that basically means that as the cube moves, the, the light will try and keep up to it. Let's see, it's kind of racing off, it's kind of losing it. Let's just do it in this view. You can see the spotlight trying to catch up to it. Pretty cool. And anything, and I really um, can of course also have um, any of this animation wizard stuff done to it as well. Okay, so you can actually, um, you know, spin this and vibrate it and all that sort of carry on. And if you wanted to have, let's say we wanted a spinning cube on top of this cube. Of course, we can just go and pop that in there. C, 
set that all up to spin. Okay. Just grab this. This is the world's cheapest helicopter. Cool, so I grab that and I can say, yeah, spin at 180, and we want it to spin on the Z axis. Hit OK, so we should. Oops, I might have animated a few things there, did I? No. Oops, he's <laughs> uh, just accidentally spun my camera. Crab cube 2. Let's go back to the beginning of our animation. Oops, that one that should be over here as well. No animation done to it, no. Cube 2. See, this is the only thing I always find annoying. Is that for some reason, it doesn't have any animation done to it. So what I usually do, if you go insert, we can just add um, an orientation keyframe. And it usually is enough. No. Okay, just go animation wizard then. And let's go okay. When we close it, still hasn't done it. So this is I always find slightly annoying. See so as soon as you go and just touch this and get some animation on it, which is cool. We just pop back to here, go cube two, so spin in the Z. Okay. Go to the end. And we'll just delete this keyframe. It should still be spinning. No. Alright, I must have deleted the wrong thing. seem to have deleted an entire animation. Undo modify animation spotlight. No, I've completely ruined it. But yeah. Track motion. Basic. Should be spinning now. Oops, spinning in the wrong axis though. For some reason I lost my cube one animation. So let's just move him to four seconds. Put him there. Go to zero. Move him back there. Cool. Let's grab this guy. Move him to there. And then go link to cube and if we hit play oops apart from that so we go cube 2 click on this guy no he's not animating why not because it's the wrong cube still not going to come up so we hit the animation wizard right click on it next Next, next, spin, yep, but spin on the Z, that's it. Next, 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 finish. Hit play. Wahoy! And that, my friends, is how you make the world's cheapest helicopter. And you can parent things to all sorts of crazy stuff. So, yeah, if I want to put little point lights on the end of it, not a problem. Let's just go into this view. Go and create a little point light. Make them really tiny. Put them over here. Now, see, in this case, what I would do is I would group this.
these together. Now, if I parent this, I don't, or link it to, to cube 2, I'm not sure what will happen. Oh, there you go, worked fine. Alright. So it's actually revolving around its centre. Now, where you can go astray is if you got pivot points wrong. Okay, so you'll actually find if I um, adjust this thing's pivot point, which the easiest is done like this. Oops, I've just animated the pivot point. Always get you into trouble. Okay, if I moved it in that direction, you'll see that it now works perfectly still. <laughs> oh, just be careful with your pivot points anyway. Um, that's about it, actually. So, um, thank you very much for doing the course. I look forward to seeing your animations and your progress on your blogs. Um, if you've got any questions, especially about animation, um, please just post it onto, the, onto Moodle and um, I'll jump on there and um, answer your questions. If there's anything else you want me to cover, um, and I mean anything else, like um, in view in, in its entirety, there are a lot of things still here that we haven't even touched upon. And um, there's all sorts of things like um, recording macros and all this sort of carry on and Python scripts and some very complex stuff um, in there. Um, however, I don't know how much use it would be. I don't think I've really ever used it. There is a couple of cool things in there, but um, yeah, I'll let you Google it. But um, thank you very much. And until next time, oh, hang on. Of course, we've got to um, have a look at our renders. So I'll grab those. Um, it looks like it's 82% complete, but I've got to get going. So um, yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. All right, so here we are back in Photoshop. Um, so what I this is a really cool thing with these smart layers. So what I've done is I right clicked on that, right? And I made it into a smart layer earlier. And now all I have to do is go to Smart Objects, Replace Contents, and find my my new rendering, which, is that right? I think so, yeah, it looks about right. Um, and I'll select this one, it's an image sequence, and go place. And now it updates with the new animation that we've just done. So now I can go and spit that out um, as a movie. How do I do that? There we go, render video. Same thing as last time, you know, what size do you want it, etc, etc. What's it going to be called? Where's it going to? Um, what do we call the last one? Um, Halle 5, so we'll call it Halle 6, I suppose. Yeah, we'll call it Halle 6. Blah, 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 blah. So again, this is where you'd go through and you can choose, like, you know, if you wanted it to be an image sequence again. Um, quick time, um, well, no, we've already covered this, so I'm just going to use the same settings as last time. High quality, blah, 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 blah. Remember, um, H.264 isn't any good if you want to edit this into other stuff. If it's just going straight up into the internet, then fine. But really, H.264 is pretty terrible for trying to edit because it's so heavily compressed, you can't really adjust the colors or anything like that. Um, in this case, though, it'll be fine. All right. Render. So that's now going to export um, our clip and very shortly it will appear uh, not in my trash over here in a few seconds so remember this time we should see a little bit of shake on it i'm hoping that it will randomize it a little bit so it doesn't look quite so mechanical here it is And off it goes. Still getting this kind of very strange. The only way you could really do that is maybe if you had like another ventilator that was kind of moving around, or maybe we animated it slowly powering off. 
So it should really fade out from that distance. Going out to a point kind of looks a bit weird, doesn't it? You can also see that thing there is wobbling around a little bit because it accidentally animated that with a bit of shake. But to be honest, it actually looks quite good. It actually looks like it's in movement now. Awesome. Anyway, so that's animation and a nice little way of um, finishing it up for the year. Anyway, as I've already said, thanks for doing the course and um, yeah, looking forward to seeing your little animated pieces. Till then, okay, bye bye.